Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's broadcast, a keynote presentation, Solid Phase Micro Extraction, New Developments in Bioanalysis and Medical Applications. It is presented by Barbara Boyko, PhD, who is an Associate Professor at Nicholas Copernicus University in Torun, Poland, and Janusz Pawlician, PhD, who is a Professor of Chemistry at the University of Waterloo in Ontario, Canada. I am Judy O'Rourke of LabRoots, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. We are delighted to bring you this educational web seminar presented by LabRoots. LabRoots is the leading scientific social networking website and producer of educational virtual events and webinars. Before I begin, I'd like to remind everyone this event is interactive. We encourage you to participate by submitting as many questions as you want at any time you want during the presentation. Just click on the Ask a Question box located on the far left of your screen and type your questions into the drop-down box that appears on the screen. Our speakers will respond to your questions via email. If you have trouble seeing or hearing the presentation, please click on the Ask a Question box to let us know that you're having a problem. This presentation is educational and thus offers continuing education credits. Please click on the Continuing Education Credits tab located in the top right corner of the presentation window and follow the process to obtain your credits. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Boyko and Dr. Pavlishan. I will now turn the presentation over to them. Thank you very much for the kind introduction. So I will be talking first. Uh, my name is Janusz Pawlicz from the University of Warlow, as said, I was introduced. And in my part of my presentation, I'll focus on fundamentals, just to give you an idea why the technology works and uh, what the fundamentals of the technology. So you, when you look at this presentation, you, have, you need to have open mind because we'll be changing paradigm of present way of doing analytical chemistry, specifically sample preparation. So I will try to explain you something which might be difficult, looking difficult to you. In this case, solid phase micro extraction, which you might not practice in every day, and it looks therefore it's difficult. But I will try to make it as simple as possible. Then we will point out the opportunity to improve the understanding of the technology by further courses or papers. So again, the idea is to look out of the box. What you do presently is not necessarily the most optimal. The science moves forward, and therefore, you need to consider your options. So the technology I, fo I want to focus on is in the area of sample preparation. As you understand, most of you are practitioners of analytical chemistry, so you understand that this is the process. The analytical process consists of several steps. So I will focus on the area of sample preparation. So ideal sample preparation would facilitate high throughput or in vivo sampling. That's what the SPME does. It requires a very effective coupling between the sampling, sample preparation, and convenient introduction to the separation device, such as chromatograph or directly mass spectrometer. Traditionally, and many of you probably consider sample preparation as an art, not a science. However, the progress in science allows us to look much more carefully on different processes occurring in when you do sample preparation, and therefore, you know, you can actually have a full understanding of what you are doing. So you can rationally optimize the process to be very effective. And by doing so, of course, you have a lot of advantages. I understand many of you are working in clinical labs or industry, don't have the time to spend on it. But of course, I work in academia. I had the opportunity to work with the young scientists for a period of their thesis, where we can make a scientific project and therefore have the depth of understanding. And by doing so, we can make it as interesting as possible. So we can look at the uh, subjects in vivo, as you will see. We can look at the very difficult samples, uh, get the very interesting information about the system. So uh, basically, 
the choice of your central collaboration will, will allow you to uh, drive the amount of information you're going to get. And of course, many of you, as I am, are concerned about the environment. So well, anytime you consider a new area of sample preparation, new technology, you need to consider the technology which are green in nature. This means eliminate organic solvents, eliminate reagents, do measurement on site and in vivo, to facilitate measurements directly where the sample is. So we don't need to transport the sample to the laboratory, which of course is energy consuming instead. So it's not only elimination of solvents, but also moving the analytical chemistry on site, basically performing the screening and on site analysis. In some cases, like medical laboratories, it's very important because it gives you immediate information to the doctor or surgeons about the condition of the patient. Now, of course, I'll be talking about extraction. So uh, I'll just remind you about the very fundamental process, process of partitioning. Yeah? So if you have, a, uh, for example, sample made in contact with the extraction phase, analyze partition into the extraction phase. If you choose extraction phase, to have high affinity towards the analyte than the sample matrix. So you basically have this enrichment factor K, which is listed below, which is basically ratio of concentrations at the uh, low concentration. So you basically have a process of increasing the concentration or enrichment. So, but what I'll be focusing on, it's not a traditional exhaustive extraction technique, such as liquid, liquid extraction or protein precipitation, but I will try to encourage you to consider micro extraction. So this is, will be very important for you to understand the difference and the advantages. So this is the example of to clearly demonstrate this. So here we have a water analysis. Yeah, so typically in water analysis, you have one liter of water, 40 milliliters of solvents, and basically then you separate uh, this and do further evaporation to so have a concentration, then you and you uh, concentrate to one milliliter, and then you inject one microliter out of this into the ankle instrument. So it's a very, very lengthy process, it uses compish of organic solvents, and of course evaporations, and what's happened with the vapors, of course goes to the atmosphere, which eventually we breathe. So what I'm saying is, let's replace it with a much simpler process. You have a, for example, fiber coated with about one microliter of the extraction phase, some type of solvent, and place it in the same amount of one liter of water. Now, obviously some of you says, well, you can do it, but what about the sensitivity of the measurements? And in fact, if you go through the calculation, you find that the sensitivity will be identical. And why? The reason why is by trying to exhaustively extract using 40 milliliters of solvent, you actually lower the concentration in water. And therefore, as you remember from the previous slide when I show you distribution constant, the concentration in water is less. So therefore, the concentration in the solvent is less as well. Why here, if you use a small amount of extraction phase, the concentration in water doesn't change. So your, your concentration of the fiber is much higher. So you have much higher enrichment factor. So this is one advantage. So you have high enrichment factor, and the other advantage is that you don't need to define the volume, because if you do exhaustive extraction, you need to know the volume, to know that you will exhaustively extract. Well, here, you basically place it in the source. You will see, we talk about tissue, we talk about bloodstream, we talk about another application, environmental application of water, and so on. So it's basically, uh, you don't need to measure the volume of your sample, which is very convenient for on-site analysis. So this is the major reasons why microextraction is gaining uh, interest. So I will particularly focus on one form of microextraction called solid phase microextraction. And this is a technology where the extraction phase is the sorbent, which is dispersed on some type of support. And the amount of the sorbent is low, so as I discussed before, you don't do exhaustive extraction, but you rather extract and calibrate via equilibria 
or some kinetics factors like it would be like I mentioned below in flow uh, field as a flow injection analysis. The beauty about SPME is not only what I say has the advantage of enrichment, but it's also you can coat any type of surface. Yeah? So you have a surface of the fibers you can see, surface of the tube, surface of the vessels, particles, uh, steering mechanism, the disc, and all of them has been already investigated. You, you see the publication below, which kind of introduces to you know, those different topics quite early. And in the previous slides, you see the references to the um, to the books which has been published on the topic. So if somebody is interested, please uh, consider getting those books. Like in this here, below you have another book of theory and practice. So if you use the fiber format, which is the most popular one, and, but it's not the only one which we use, but most of the application we'll show you here will be fiber, but also the blades I'll show you in a moment. So basically, you can consider three different type of experiments. Direct extraction, yeah? so if you have a, on the fir first slide from the left, yeah? so you have a direct extraction clean matrix, headspace extraction, which is very powerful application of the SPME. Or more recently, and that's what I will focus on, looking at the very complex samples and using some type of membrane protection approach to avoid the contamination of the coating by real matrices. You know, the, the SPME is commercially available, primary for you looking at the food analysis in fragrance type of um, compounds, but also in, in clinical also applications, residue, for instance, solvent residues and drugs, and uh, it has been used in headspace of blood and so on. So it's a very complex matrix that can be analyzed that way because you isolate the sample from the extraction phase via headspace. So um, the device which is available is called Superco SPME device, and uh, it's shown here. It's basically a syringe where you have a coated fiber inside the uh, needle. By moving the fiber in and out, you can expose the fiber to the sample, or you can protect it in the needle. Yeah? So if you do extraction, you expose the fiber, or if you do thermal desorption, you expose the fiber, and if you penetrate the septa, you um, keep the fiber in the needle. And typical automated de device is CTC auto sampler, which is sold all over the world. This is another opportunity for you to learn more. The, there was a recent paper on chemistry published in January this year, um, descri describing the recent development in the technology. As you can see in the center, you see the syringe, and there are different approaches including the drone you can see underwater sampling doctor's office vivo sampling we actually have the human trials now so it's basically a lot of different opportunities because uh, this technology facilitates that so i will tell you now about looking at the complex sample because we we'll just will be focused on our presentation so as i mentioned to you the very popular application of solid waste micro extraction is the headspace analysis as you can see in the headspace analysis, you separate the extraction phase from the complex samples via headspace. So anything which, which is volatile goes to the fiber coating and is enriched there yeah, due to the K value. Remember what I discussed about? Then you can take it out and uh, desorb it in local instruments and you get a good clean extract because anything which goes through the headspace is clean to be firmly desorbed in the hot injector of the GC and then separating the common and detect it. So what we have been working for the last 20 years to develop this direct extraction. So you can see below, you have fiber placed directly in the matrix and we wanted to also achieve this cleanup approach. So how did we do that? So you can see the matrix and the uh, compounds bound to the matrix. They are in the equilibrium with a free concentration of the same analytes. And now we are trying to equilibrate the coating with uh, this free form. So in fact, anything which goes via free form to the coating, as long as those matrix doesn't, the matrix shown here, 
the, like proteins or pieces of tissue do not absorb on the fiber, you have very clean extraction as well because this goes via free form. This means it is reasonably soluble in water. So we can dissolve it in the LC and uh, LC injector or the solvent and then introduce it to the LC and basically uh, perform a separations on the clean matrix. So um, here, uh, the example, what would be benefit of that? So you have a apple homogenate. Uh, if you look on the left slide, uh, this is headspace analysis, 60 minutes extraction, and the two, comprehensive two-dimensional gas chromatography. And you can see that compared to the right uh, trace, where you have again two-dimensional chromatography, comprehensive two-dimensional gas chromatography, in way on vertical axis you have a boil, boiling point, and the on horizontal axis you have a polarity. So you actually see much more compounds here yes, on the right side, especially high molecular weight and polar ones, because those have low Henry constant and therefore they are not extracted very well by headspace approach. So how do we now do that? Incorporate this approach, direct extraction and clean extraction. So basically, here uh, it is shown what we do. So we basically have the fiber, as you can see up in upper part of the slide, which is have a coating. The coating is surrounded by the protection layer. Okay, and this protection layer, as is shown below, can consist of the Teflon, for example, polyclonal neutral, or PDMS. So if you have such a system. Uh, because of this protection layer, nothing is being absorbed on the surface of this uh, polymer. Uh, so you have a clean extraction. So you just need to have rapid rinse uh, and with clean water and perform uh, desorption. Now, in addition, this technology works very well from practical point of view. It produces a called balanced coverage of hydrophobic and hydrophilic compounds at the same time. This means we can extract compounds with, from different log P, as long as the uh, sorbent has high enough polarity to go very deep in the uh, polar range. So basically, why does it happen? So here the slide demonstrates that. You have, ex you have this fiber with extraction phase. In addition, around the fiber exists a called boundary layer. So, it is the static layer. Uh, this exists in any type of system placed in a fluid or tissue. So the in order for the high molecules to go through, it takes a long time. So within a half an hour or so or less, when we perform the sampling or blood extraction, or whatever, uh, the, those do not typically reach the fiber. If they reach it, as I mentioned, the fiber is surface is impregnated with the polymer, which prevents its absorption. So by rinsing it, you can get rid, get rid of it. Meanwhile, small molecules, and those darker points are hydrophobic ones. So you can see they are heavily bound to the matrix because, of course, hydrophobic analytes free concentration is very low. While hydrophilic, as you can see, very poorly bound. So free concentrations are almost equal to the total concentration. And therefore, as you put the fiber in, you immediately equilibrate with the with the polar compounds and slowly extract the hydrophobic ones. So within half an hour, you collect both very effectively. And here, just to show you how does it work. So you compare the uh, hydrophobic with hydrophilic. As you know, morphine is a uh, hydrophilic compound. So you can see there is no difference between extraction of PDMS and plasma, plasma contains a pro protein and PBS not. So, so basically, you can see that since I mentioned the three equal total, the amount of extracted in both cases is the same. Why in hydrophobic, you can see a huge difference. In, when there's no proteins, you extract more because in that case, three equal total. Why in uh, when you have a protein, some binding occurs and therefore actually fiber see much lower concentration. So this is, as I mentioned, due to the binding. If you want to consider this process more fully, you also need to consider the dissociation rate constant and so on, which we have done 
as well if you look at our recent publication, which is actually shown here. A very brief summary of what this publication telling telling about uh, is basically showing that because you have this balance between the uh, competing extraction by the matrix compared to the partitioning onto the fiber, you actually extract the same amount or close to the same amount independent of the log P of the compound until, of course, the coating is not capable to extract anymore. That means if it's very polar, you, of course, you can, uh, compound is very polar, ionic, it will be not extracted by have hydrophobic type of extraction phase. Even a very polar one. So basically, because of this competitive uh, binding, you have this con con so called balanced coverage, and you can extract a range of compounds very effectively. And uh, we validated that on a number of experiments. Here, some of those initial validations, when you look at the bacteria growth, uh, and, to, and we extracted them uh, in a the number of experiments, you can see we published in June of Metabolomics. What does it mean is basically this tool is very effective in extracting full range of um, polarity of the compound. So you can actually get metabolome, metabolome profile. And to the compound which extract uh, from 100 to 1,000, now you can do even more depending on the porosity of this protection layer I mentioned about. As you can see, we detect from minus log, if you use a sorbent such as HLB, you know, type of sorbent, we can detect it from um, log P minus 7 to all the way to 15. So we see all the compounds. However, because we extract it via free form, it's very clean extraction. So if you compare, for example, our approach, SPME, which is upper trace versus lower trace uh, protein precipitation, you see you have a, this is a 40, this is blank after 40 rounds of protein precipitation, and upper is blank after 40 rounds of um, SPME. As you can see uh, below, uh, we have huge phospholipid band coming. Why in upper or upper chromatogram, which is basically multiplied background of the, of the chromatogram below, so it's basically 100 times more sensitive um, the, the description. So it's basically you multiply the background by 100 times. And so you see you have very, very low background here. The SPME doesn't extract the huge amount of phospholipids as protein precipitation that's because we don't dissolve the, the phospholipids. You extract in their free form, but the solubility is so low, so we extract some of them to see them, but not enough to cause the trouble. Okay, so now from a practical point of view, how do you use this technology? So the um, one of the approach for high throughput, we are using this uh, device called Concept 96, so it's 96 blade system. So instead of coating fibers, we're actually coating blades to increase the surface area of the sorbent and therefore increasing mass transfer uh, to the extraction phase. And uh, having, as you can see, four different 96 wall blades. One of it, we, pre we perform the activation, the other one, uh, extraction, then rinsing and then desorption, and then this 96 wall plate with unlaced dissolved into it, it can go to the anechoic instrument. Now, what's the advantages of this approach versus the SPE? So basically the major one is because it's open bed system. Yeah, so it's basically no particles of the tissue can be trapped there when SPE when you percolate the sample through, it may occur. So that reasons why, as I showed you before, there is no matrix effect in this technology. Uh, you can do it also much e easier o o automation, um, as shown here. And um, yeah, we can look at the larger amount of samples uh, without worrying about breakthrough. So there are several advantages, and this is well described in the literature 
Now, more recently, uh, there was an improvement in this design uh, where you can see now there's a tower which holds uh, 96 volt plate, which are exchanged one by one. So first one is used for activation, then exchange it for extraction, then rinsing, then desorption. So such a device is a little bit less expensive. So it's available from a company called PS Technologies, if you're interested. Now, the other beautiful feature of SPME, as I mentioned at the beginning, is because you can sample directly from the source, is an excellent tool for in vivo SPME. And the primary reason for it is, is because you don't need to take the tissue out. So we call it chemical biopsy. We, ex we equilibrate the coating uh, with the system and then pick up this. And if you make this coating in the form of coated fiber, so it could be very small, you, you show minimum damage and you don't take any tissue out. You just take chemistry out. So Barbara will explore give you uh, this, this approach further, give you some applications. And ag again, the beauty about it is that when you remove this chemistry out, you also isolate this chemistry from the uh, enzymes, and therefore there's no enzymatic uh, degradation of the sample, so you, in fact, you combine it, the extraction with quenching automatically, and there's no matrix effect. So it's a very effective tool So in summary, what's, why it's in vivo SPME is very popular. First of all, it's a metabol and coverage of the small molecules is very good. Uh, eliminates you know, suppression in mass spectrometry measurement. Captures unstable analytes. That's because you equilibrate with real system and you can analyze immediately after the extraction. And then finally, uh, because you are sampling the system with minimum damage. For example, if you do mice studies, you can use one mice over the whole pharmacokinetic profile without doing much damage to the mice. Yes. So this is, improves the precision because inter-animal variability is eliminated. Here's the example. So here, one of the, our first studies, and for those who are interested, you can look into the uh, paper which is listed below. When we compare standard approach on the right, which is the protein precipitation, yeah, so standard approach, um, and uh, on the left you have a two uh, SPME approaches. One is equilibrium, one is pre-equilibrium, so short-term sampling, long-term sampling, five minutes versus two minutes, uh, but you can see there is no difference in the profile, no difference even in absolute values. So there is no reason to do it direct, uh, to do traditional methods where you actually need to draw a lot of blood from animals. And you can also do tissue sampling. So we recently published this paper in chemistry to draw a lot of attention, as you can see. And basically what it is, as you can see, there are two devices principally which we use in uh, in in vivo SPME. One, the lower one, you can see traditional one where you have a fiber in the sheath, you know, on the needle, like I showed you before. And then uh, the upper part where you actually have a coated needle, which where the coating is in the, um, in the uh, recess. So, because now we can make those coating very robust, so the tip penetrate the tissue, and there's not much, much shear forces on the coating, so we can reuse this needle many times. So this is the, we, we think this would be the ideal medical device, and we are working with a number of surgeons and uh, animal persons involved, research involved in animal studies. And finally, what I wanted to say, because the extraction is clean, we don't need to have chromatography. We can go directly to mass spectrometry. So this is really the ideal for moving it everything on site, especially if you want to move it close to the surgery room or even doctor's office. Yeah, so we can do it with extractions, devices in the form of blades, tubings, meshes, and fibers, which we already discussed. 
And again, this has been discussed in this review paper I mentioned to you, and uh, I will not talk about it in any more details, just indicate that this is an uh, opportunity. Uh, here I show you my group. Uh, Barbara will show you also her, her group, but I just wanted to show you what you see above is my website. Why I'll indicate to you? Because we actually have the courses twice a year. The next one would be December 6th and 7th this year. If you're interested, you can sign up to actually experience SPME not only in lectures, but also in practice. We actually have a practical experiment there. And finally, there's also a conference called XTEC, and the next year is going to be in Guangzhou, China. So again, you are very much welcome to attend it. If you found this technology and interesting, and if you're interested to explore other extraction technologies. So now I give my space to Barbara to continue the presentation. So hello, everybody. Uh, now I will continue the talk by giving you some more information about uh, clinical applications uh, and some other bio applications, like some cell line studies. Uh, so basically, whatever Janusz was talking about uh, fits the clinical purpose. So as, as you can see here, SPME, as you already know, is used in headspace mode, also in direct immersion mode. And it both applies to uh, clinical or bio applications. So basically, I will focus on direct immersion. Uh, Headspace is also used mainly, for example, uh, for breath analysis, but also other analysis. Uh, direct immersion is uh, more new because uh, we have right now biocompatible fibers. And uh, thanks to that feature, uh, it allows us to basically insert fiber directly into the tissue or, or blood. So the workflow that Janusz uh, discussed with you uh, also applies here. So as you can see, after extraction, the fiber is quickly rinsed, and then it goes to uh, organic solvent or organic uh, acute solvent mixture. Uh, and then we basically inject this uh, extract to a uh, chromatograph coupled to mass spectrometer in most of the cases. Uh, so we are using uh, two basic devices, two basic geometries of SPME. So fiber, which is the uh, main geometry that we are using for tissue analysis because we want to provide minimum invasiveness to the system. And then also so-called blades. So this is basically thin film uh, to improve the sensitivity. Uh, but also this is very common to be used in high throughput mode. And I will also show you some examples uh, of such applications. Uh, so here I just want to uh, show you what are the solutions of SPME to the demands that uh, clinical applications have. So first, of course, uh, we need to have very simple uh, method of sample collection. Ideally, we don't want to collect any sample. If you want to, for example, do in vivo, as Janusz explained, it would be great. We don't want to deal with too much samples. Uh, so of course, here we can either take very small amounts of the sample, very small volumes, because as uh, you have already seen, the fiber can be really small, so the uh, extraction Phase, uh, can be really very, uh, very small. So you don't really need to have a large volume of the sample. Uh, or as I mentioned, if you have in vivo type of application, you don't collect any sample, you just extract small molecules of ad or other molecules if your extraction phase is designed for that from the system. And then you basically do not take out any sample. Uh, so the second demand is a simple analytical workflow. So if we uh, really want to have SPME or any other technology in clinical lab, it cannot be very complex workflow. We want to have the least steps uh, possible. And in fact, SPME is uh, very simple. So of course it requires optimization. There is no magic here but it integrates the sampling and sample preparation in one step. 
And if we uh, also uh, want to have a metabolism quenching, for example, if we are looking for biomarkers, we need to quench metabolism immediately once we collect the sample. And here again, if we do in vivo, then we have also quenching integrated with two previous steps. Uh, so then it would be nice if we don't have to have for uh, different applications, different methods. And uh, I will show you a number of examples here where we can use SPME and pretty much with the same workflow. So we can use the same technology uh, for many different applications. We can do target analysis, which is the most common for clinical uh, analysis, but also we can do, for example, uh, medical research based also towards biomarkers discovery. So we can do, for example, uh, metabolome profiling or lipidomics analysis. And uh, another demand from clinical point of view uh, is applic application for complex matrices. Whatever we, whatever matrix we deal with, so pretty much plasma, urine, serum, full, like uh, whole blood or tissue, uh, these are really complex matrices. Uh, so as Janusz mentioned, and also I already mentioned in, in my part, we have already biocompatible uh, materials which we use for production of the fibers. And basically we don't experience any matrix effect later on. We are eliminating uh, large molecules from the system and the uh, matrix components, they do not attach to the fiber. Okay, so another two things uh, which are necessary to be uh, fulfilling the lab is high throughput and automation. And in fact, uh, as Janusz already uh, mentioned in his uh, part, uh, we have the automated system that uh, basically covers all uh, steps in SPME workflow, which is preconditioning, extraction, wash, desorption, and also on top of that, we can do evaporation and reconstitution. We also have an option to have a semi-automated system. So we are just replacing the 96 uh, well plates, uh, but we still have full control on the temperature we have agitation of the system, as, and of course, we have uh, high throughput. And then we go and we have high sensitivity and wide dynamic range. And of course, uh, it was already mentioned, we have a variety of sorbents and geometries we can play with. So by increasing, for example, uh, volume of the sorbent, uh, we have um, the increased high, uh, increased sensitivity. So we have basically this high sensitivity we are dealing with uh, low concentrations. Uh, and of course, we can also play with the time of our extraction. So we can work at the equilibrium if we want to really reach uh, the highest possible uh, concentration, I mean, uh, sensitivity, or we can work at pre-equilibrium. So then we actually have much shorter extraction time, but we sacrifice sensitivity. And then a very important thing is to sterilize uh, the fiber or the whatever device we are using, or to use them just a single time. And uh, already from our experience, we know that uh, we may autoclave the fibers, we can do uh, basically regular auto, um, we can do regular sterilization with autoclaving, but we can also use, for example, uh, gas sterilization and of course alcohol sterilization because in most of the cases, uh, the preconditioning is done in the mixture of methanol water. Uh, we may want to also have uh, temporal and special resolution. So for that, we can of course use the small fibers, for example, so we can have number of sampling points just by inserting the fibers at different time points and we still have very low invasiveness the size of the fiber the dimension of the fiber is approximately 10 times lower uh, than the acupunct uh, than the uh, biopsy needle so we can easily repeat sampling of the same animal or of the same uh, organ uh, number of times of course, in the same time, we can uh, do a number of extractions. So for example, we can have the same uh, time point of extraction and we can have 
simultaneous sampling of different areas of the body. Uh, we can have fully quantitative method and uh, we don't have time today to play with uh, calibration uh, and, and explain you all type of calibrations we have, but Janusz already mentioned a few. So uh, here we can really uh, choose from uh, a variety of different calibration approaches and we can uh, have fully quantitative data and I will show you example in a minute. Uh, of course, we want to have results very fast. This is the first thing that uh, clinicians ask. Uh, so how fast I can get the data? Well, uh, of course, if we are including um, LC run, it's usually uh, a little bit uh, long, but as Janusz mentioned, we can uh, couple SPME directly with MS, and then we are actually uh, hoping to have, uh, with this direct coupling, to have uh, um, instrumentation on site, so, pre so give the data immediately after uh, sampling. And of course, it's very important. We don't want to have uh, very large uh, organic solvents on site. We don't want to deal with organic solvents if possible. And this PME actually, because this is micro extraction technology, we basically have very minimum consumption of organic solvents. And if we have direct cupping with MS, it's actually even less. So now I will go through a few examples of uh, clinical applications. The first one is focused on oncology. Uh, so right now we are working on phenotyping of brain tumors and we are working towards intraoperative monitoring of biomarkers. So basically there are two goals. First is to propose uh, a few compounds which differentiate brain tumors and their grades. So we are mainly focused on gliomas. And the other one is to propose new fast analytical approach to on-site diagnostic testing of brain tumor. So that's what I already mentioned, to basically have very fast um, answer uh, in the operating room. And here you can see how we do sampling of tumors. So these tumors were just resected. This is still in OR room. So we are uh, inserting several fibers to the uh, to the tumor. On the left, you can see meningioma, uh, meningioma, and on the right, you can see glioma. So basically, we choose uh, meningioma because uh, this is, uh, I would say, easy uh, tumor to be sampled. Is uh, uh, they resected usually uh, as the whole tumor, and uh, this is very. Uh, very easily to be recognized by histological uh, testing. So basically, we were using this tumor as a reference. So we were comparing our data with histology. Uh, on the right, as I said, you can see glioma. So uh, this type of tumor has many subtypes. It's very uh, malignant tumor. So this is the one that we are interesting, uh, interested in to basically find biomarkers of different grades of gliomas and also subtypes of gliomas which are susceptible for a uh, given treatment or not. Uh, on the next slide, as you can see, we were optimizing the method for uh, this brain tumors. So we were testing different uh, desorption solvents. We have selected seven millimeter uh, coating for those fibers because this is uh, the optimum uh, size that uh, basically fit our purpose. And uh, then we were running the extract using LCMS, but high resolution mass spec. Uh, you can see in the middle uh, figures how many features we were able to actually extract. So you can see that even with just seven millimeter fiber and half an hour sampling, we've been able to uh, obtain to extract hundreds of, uh, hundreds of compounds. Uh, and we always run in helix mode and uh, reverse phase mode just to increase the coverage of analytes. So as you can see here, we are uh, basically covering on each column from about 100 to a few hundred uh, compounds. 
then you can see that we were very successful in differentiating two different types of tumors. So basically gliomas from meningiomas. I don't have time to show you more data today, but we were also able to differentiate different grades of tumors. And uh, also uh, when we compared with histological and um, genotyping data, uh, our phenotyping were actually in very good agreement. On the right, you can see that we are able to actually pick up uh, compounds of uh, interest. So compounds which, of course, after uh, running a uh, larger cohort and, uh, and uh, after going through proper uh, validation, we can actually propose some potential biomarker uh, for different tumor types and different, um, different uh, malignancy grade. So right now we are also focusing uh, on lipidomics because we want to uh, extend our studies to lipidomic data. And right now we are already looking into the data from more than 200 patients. Uh, another oncological project that we are involved, it's actually in collaboration with Toronto General Hospital, is uh, monitoring of uh, doxorubic. And this is the drug which was used uh, for high dose local chemotherapy. So basically uh, that was uh, animal study. So as you can see here, that was pig model. Yeah, our uh, collaborators, the clinicians, they were actually uh, looking into the uh, concentration and distribution of this drug uh, in the lung. So different lobes of the lung because they are working on new method um, of drug delivery. So basically they were using the perfusion system to deliver this particular uh, chemotherapeutic agents to the lung tissue where uh, the tumor is located. So basically the uh, lungs are isolated from the rest of the body. So the chemotherapeutic agent shouldn't actually go uh, into different parts of the body. Uh, so the problem that the clinicians had was basically how, what is the concentration uh, of the drug because uh, they cannot do uh, that many biopsies uh, over the period of this perfusion. So we were basically inserting the fiber uh, to the lung, as you can see here. And uh, the arrow points actually into three fibers located in one of the lobes of the lung. And so this is on the left side of the picture. And on the right, you can see exactly the same spot after sampling. So as you can see, actually the, the method is not really invasive. There is no bleeding. There are just uh, air bubbles coming up. Uh, but uh, uh, basically we were, we were repeating the same procedure number of times. So you will see the results in a moment. Of course, again, this is the targeted method that requires optimization. So we were looking into the effect of autoclaving uh, so basically autoclaving even improved the effectiveness of the extraction. We are also testing different uh, preconditioning solvents. And uh, what is very important, we of course here need to do calibration. So as I mentioned, we will not go into details, but uh, here I just mentioned we were, uh, we were using external uh, calibration. So as a surrogate matrix, we were using a uh, lamp lang and we homogenized this matrix. And uh, basically we were spiking at different uh, concentrations of the doxorubicin and we were extracting exactly using the same extraction time. And as you can see on the bottom right picture, we were comparing the results uh, from the tissue collected in the hospital. So first we were extracting uh, from this intact tissue and then we homogenize the same tissue and we extract from this homogenate and we were getting exactly the same data uh, using the calibration curve prepared in the surrogate matrix. So then well, this method of course were fully validated so you can see the result, we meet all the uh, requirements and then you can see basically the results uh, of during the perfusion, how the concentration and distribution of the uh, drug was changing. So uh, the clinicians were using two different doses of the drug. You can see first it was increasing, then at some point the drug uh, concentration was dropping. So as you can see, we can get fully quantitative data uh, using in vivo extraction 
and for uh, calibration using external uh, calibration curve. Uh, of course, uh, in vivo solid phase micro extraction was used for many other studies. Here you can see how we are doing extraction uh, from the circulatory system, from, from the blood system. You can use either this uh, needle assembly fibers, so you can insert them directly to the vein of the animal and then expose the fiber uh, to the bloodstream for the extraction. Or you can also place this fiber through the uh, catheter, which is standard for a clinical application. You can also insert the um, non-assembled fiber through the uh, lower lock type of designs. Uh, so it's very flexible method. As you can see, you can just adjust it to your needs. So basically you can tailor your method uh, to your needs and to the environment you need to work with. Uh, in terms of rodent studies, of course, such fiber, especially assembly fiber, is too big to be inserted directly to the vein of the animal. So in that case, you basically use one of the interfaces that was developed for that purpose. So here you can see that there are basically different designs. One which is in the middle. This is uh, basically the interface, which is like a loop. So one end is inserted into one vein of the animal, and then the other end uh, it goes back to the animal. So the blood circulates through this interface. So you can basically insert the fiber uh, to this interface, and you can also use, for example, syringe or other pump. Uh, to provide some agitation by uh, using a push-pull type of um, uh, agitation. And then on the right, you can see that also this type of device can be one way. So again, you can use the push-pull with syringe, for example, to agitate the blood through the device. And then you can uh, sample as it is uh, shown uh, on the picture. Uh, so again, some examples uh, of the applications. So exactly these devices were used for uh, extraction from the bloodstream of uh, carbamazepine and its metabolite. So basically the colleague of mine was using full pharmacokinetic profiling, full pharmacokinetic uh, profile of carbamazepine and its uh, metabolite. And uh, it was uh, the SPME data was compared with uh, automated serial uh, sampling and also terminal uh, blood uh, draw. So uh, for those of you who are not familiar with the technologies, basically for this kind of studies, uh, pharmacokinetic analysis, you really need to use number of animals. So you either uh, sacrifice one animal per data point, that's for the terminal and uh, or you can basically take a volume of uh, blood but then the animal needs to recover for some time to be used for next sampling so as you can see here uh, basically the number of animals needs to be uh, quite large to get this full pharmacokinetic profile as shown on the picture and uh, if you look carefully into the data spme gives uh, the same results but uh, rsd is actually uh, a lot lower for SPME because, as Janusz already mentioned, we are actually eliminating inter-animal variability here. So first, we don't sacrifice as many animals, and the other one, we are improving the data by uh, eliminating inter-animal or, or minimizing inter animal variability. Uh, we are not limited to blood. On that picture, you can see that we are also using uh, pharmacokinetic profiling of uh, carbamazepine, uh, but uh, from the rat brain. And for this type of studies, we are also using microdialysis uh, for comparison, because this is uh, basically a gold standard, I would say, for uh, brain studies. And as you can see, again, the data was in full agreement between the two methods. Uh, we are not limited to drugs, absolutely. We can also do endogenous compounds. So this is the uh, example of the um, targeted metabolomics. So as you can see here, uh, a colleague of mine, he was actually looking into different neurotransmitters during drug stimulation. Uh, so uh, 
again, uh, comparison of microdialysis showed a uh, very good agreement. But in fact, he was interested in four neurotransmitters, but uh, because of low sensitivity of microdialysis, uh, we were only uh, see, we only seen uh, two neurotransmitters with microdialysis, but SPME allowed us to see uh, all four of them. But uh, despite the fact that we have seen two, uh, again, you can see that the data is in full agreement between the two methods. And uh, while we already had the um, uh, the extract from from that targeted analysis, uh, we we thought that it would be good to actually check uh, how the untargeted metabolomics look like when we compare SPME and microdialysis. And as you can see from that uh, table and the graph, there was number of compounds that actually changed over the time after the drug stimulation, and of course there was a huge. Uh, difference between microdialysis and SPME in terms of coverage because microdialysis uh, is basically the method used for polar compounds. So non-polar compounds are not going to the dialysate, uh, but for SPME actually we had much better uh, coverage for, for non-polar compounds and uh, slightly uh, less for the polar compounds comparing to microdialysis. So basically these two methods can be nicely used together, giving us very, uh, very broad coverage of uh, analytes. And then I will go to the next uh, project that uh, we have done. Now, uh, as you can see, uh, we were using this uh, high throughput and automated system. So basically we were looking into the uh, first pharmacokinetic of two drugs, uh, tranexamic acid and rocuronium bromide, in the patients who received a uh, liver graft. And we had two groups. First was heart beating donors and the other one living donors. So basically, uh, especially for rocuronium, uh, we were checking if this drug can be used as a marker of early graft dysfunction because the uh, dead donors, so basically heart beating donor groups, uh, supposed to have worst metabolism of the drug because the drug is mainly metabolized by liver. And in fact, we were uh, we were right. So basically, this drug can be potentially used as a marker uh, of early liver dysfunction. Uh, but we also looked into the global profile of the patient. So we were using exactly the same system for doing targeted and untargeted analysis because for this type of uh, of analysis, you need to have really um, uh, quite a large group. So we just, for this untargeted uh, profiling, we just took a part of the patient's uh, samples and uh, we just check if we have any type of separation. As you can see here, we were able to differentiate between the two groups and also um, uh, pick up some compounds which differentiated the two groups. So, of course, after again running a larger cohort, uh, if we confirm those compounds can be potentially used as biomarkers of early liver dysfunction. Uh, when we are talking about high throughput system, especially 96, uh, 96 uh, plates, well plates, uh, we can also think about different in vitro assays related to uh, cell culturing. So here also we are using the system that I uh, showed you previously, the fully uh, automated system and also a semi-automated system for doing uh, cell line analysis. Well, usually we culture cell lines or doing any type of, uh, for example, microsome uh, assays in 96 well format. And this is also fully compatible with the device that we showed you previously. So here, for example, you can see that we can use this 96 well plates for culturing the cells and then doing time course analysis. So basically uh, using the same uh, samples uh, for number of times, for ex extraction of number of times, and then we can get uh, time course analysis so we can observe what compounds are declining and what compounds are appearing in the system. So for example, here we were observing the effect of drug. First we were extracting from just from the cancer cells and then we exposed them to the drug and we were observing changes over the period of time exactly from the same wells. Uh, 
the standard methods uh, for the standard methods you basically need to stop metabolism and you cannot reuse the same sample you need to basically have number of uh, samples for the experiments if you want to look over the period of time here we can decrease number of samples and reuse the same samples for uh, different uh, time point analysis uh, also, this 96 well format, as I mentioned, it used for, for example, microsome analysis. So here we were looking into the um, metabolism of the drug Combretastatin, which is fairly new drug. And so far, there is just a few metabolites known. So we've been using this time course analysis with SPME uh, to figure out what compounds, what new compounds are coming uh, up when we basically incubate drug with the microsomes. We compared this data with electrochemical metabolism detection, and then we verified with in silico prediction. And as you can see, uh, we've been able to increase the number of uh, metabolites from 5 to 16 with the proposed uh, approach. So basically, to sum up, you can see that SPM is very flexible technology. It can be used in a high throughput mode and it can be used in uh, just the fiber mode to uh, have very low invasive sampling. So you can easily sample uh, very complex matrices, including tissues. You can get very nice and broad analyte coverage. The method is very minimum invasive if you use just this tiny uh, fiber, which is basically the acupuncture needle size. Then you can have the time course analysis uh, if you want to perform uh, some extraction from either, for example, tissue without damaging the system, or for example, you may minimize the number of samples and still have a uh, full, um, um, uh, full idea about the changes over the period of time. Method is fully quantitative, so as I said, uh, there is a number of um, calibration methods that you can use for that. And uh, you can especially use them for different clinical, but also medical research type of application. Um, in I prefer actually this this method for tissue analysis over the uh, over the uh, traditional method because we are actually having here a true snapshot of the metabolism when we do in vivo studies versus uh, homogenized studies. Uh, you can do uh, cell culturing uh, with your traditional 96 uh, plate system, 96 well plate system, and uh, you can uh, basically reuse the same sample. And even at the end, you can uh, perform traditional assays uh, on the same samples. And of course, if we uh, couple SPME directly with mass spec or other uh, instrumentation, we can provide um, our clinicians with intraoperative rapid diagnostic tool in the near future. And uh, I also want to acknowledge uh, all my students, also Janusz Group, of course, our collaborators and our sponsors uh, who are providing us with the instrumentation and uh, the SPME devices. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Boyko and Dr. Pavlishin for that informative presentation. We will now start the Q&A portion of the webinar and we'll address some of the most commonly asked questions by our viewers. If you have any questions you'd like to ask, please do so now. Just click on the Ask a Question drop-down box located on the far left of your presentation window, type your question into the box that appears on your screen and click the Send button. Our speakers will follow up with your questions via email. So let's get started. Our first question is, why did solid phase micro extraction technology not find its way to general use in clinical laboratories yet? Okay, so maybe I will take it. Uh, I think that uh, there is not too many uh, groups that they are using the technology. It's uh, fairly new in bio applications. Uh, but uh, basically we can see that for the last uh, four or five years the interest is really uh, growing so clinicians are 
really happy with the technology. So uh, we basically work with uh, many groups, uh, especially surgeons, but not only. Uh, but I think that, well, uh, right now there is uh, only um, one uh, one company which uh, provides the biocompatible fibers, so that may be one of the of the problems. Uh, but I think that also people are they do not treat sample preparation uh, as a science, so uh, they they are very focused, especially in medical area. They're very much focused on the traditional methods. So uh, I think that that this is one of the problems that uh, basically the medical area is, is very difficult to go through with some new things and SPMA is definitely one of such things. Uh, but I can see from our experience that uh, actually more and more people are interested. So uh, I hope that in the nearest future, it will be much more people, many, many people uh, using that much more than today. Thank you for that. Next one is what is the future of the SPME technology? Yes, basically, SPME is a very simple way of performing sample preparation. The future is bright. <laughs> the issue is it's a new kit on the block. So, in fact, it's kind of related to the previous question. Anything which is new looks very difficult uh, because the device looks different, the procedure is a little different. Uh, calibrations are not that different, but uh, they are somewhat different in some cases. So uh, there's a lot of reservation. Yeah? However, the format is so simple that it can actually potentially solve a lot of problems. For example, just to give you the idea, one of the future I see for the technology, and uh, I mentioned that this picture was a drone, is that actually can connect. Uh, patients and environmental pollution, even in remote, remote places, into the central labs. And so, so basically, the, the devices are so light because they actually enrich the sample in a small volume, like small fiber or some blades. We also use the meshes in a different format. You can then easily transport it to central lab. And therefore, remote communities, for example, northern Canada, Africa, you know, the issues of Providing the services to those communities could be very easy, very easy reached by those technologies. So this is definitely one of the future. In addition, of course, the whole lecture is here as a future because not many labs are using it. <laughs> Thank you for that. Next one is, is saturation of the coding a problem? Yes, I mentioned that in my part of my presentation that because we have this uh, process of extraction via freeform, and freeform of analyze is controlled by the solubility of analyze, and the compounds, which are hydrophobic, which actually has a poor solubility in aqueous matrix, which is most of the sample constitu constitute of, basically limits this possibility of saturation. When I talk to a lot of scientists because of the paradigm. That's what I'm saying. You need to think outside the box. This was the first picture I showed because they always think such a small device, there's so many other compounds, they can do so much damage to that. But in fact, they don't. And in fact, if they did, we'll die because a lot of systems work in a very similar way. You know, the proteins which carry the analytes are not saturated by other uh, analytes because the equilibria prevents them to do that. So basically the same fiber, fiber equilibrates with the system, but it, because the equilibration occurs via free form in aqueous media, the saturation never occurs because the compounds which can saturate hydrophobic analytes are not very soluble. So the process of extraction is extremely slow. So within that period of time, which we perform the extraction, there's not enough analytes reaching the fiber to saturate. Thank you. Looks like we have time for just one more question. How is solid phase microextraction calibrated? Yeah, so this is, as I mentioned, one of the standard blocks because some people say, well, how do you calibrate the process, which is completely different than exhaustive extraction? In exhaustive extraction, you calibrate on volume. So you take one liter of water or one milliliter of blood, and then whatever you extracted from this one liter or one milliliter, uh, and you divide by the volume, gives you the concentration. 
here it's a little bit different. So basically you need to develop a calibration profile called matrix match calibration, which is basically the same things what we are doing even exhaustive method. Because the issue is if you have a complex matrix, you still validate that you have exhaustive extraction right? by using the calibrands of the conductive the analog uh, of the analyte and so on. It's the same thing here. You, it's the same thing here. You can use the deuterated analog to calibrate, to basically, in a sense, find the k value of some other uh, parameter. And based on that, you can calibrate your analyte. Because if you know the k value, you can, for a given matrix, you can do that. There's also a very interesting way of calibrating called uh, calibran in the extraction phase. Because Remember, it's not exhaustive technique. So when you place a fiber in the coating, in the temple, actually the analytes can also leave, or the calibrant can leave the coating to go to the meeting because it's a multi-phase calibrant. So in that case, you actually can calibrate for the convection condition. That's because when you have some extraction phase in contact with the matrix, the amount of ion extracted depending on the convection conditions and the concentration. So you can ratio out those convection conditions. As I said, so in a sense, they are very similar uh, calibration approaches at the traditional methods, but they are somewhat differently applied. So this may be looking uh, challenging, but in fact, uh, the, it's not much longer process than in this in real samples. Uh, using exhaustive extraction technique. So, uh, this all the information, of course, will take some time to acquire. So, I strongly encourage those who found this technique useful. As you can see, it's very useful and uh, uh, convenient for high throughput analysis as well as in vivo. So, it's well to know about that, so to spend more time in investigating the papers or coming for the courses, as I mentioned, in Waterloo. We are organizing the course uh, uh, twice a year. And next one is uh, this, in December 6th, 7th, 2018. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to once again thank Dr. Boyko and Dr. Pavlishan for their presentations. I would also like to thank LabRoots for making today's educational webcast possible. Before we go, I'd like to remind everyone that today's webcast will be available for on-demand viewing through January 25th, 2019. You'll receive an email from LabRoots letting you know when this webcast will be available for replay. Please share that announcement with your colleagues who may have missed today's event. That is all for now. Thank you for joining us. We hope to see you again soon. Bye.